Bride of Higara. This is Captain Soban of the fleet, Farron Shah. Looks like you could use a hand. Attention all Sobani, pick your targets and engage. Hello everyone, hello hello, this is Captain Soban. Welcome aboard to Starship Enormal Prize for our first episode of Homeworld Hardcore, doing the Tidan playthrough. It's finally time. We're gonna we're gonna play classic Homeworld One using my Homeworld Hardcore mod as the Titan. This is very exciting because I've never actually played the campaign as the Titan. I always play as Kushan because to me that's just the um, that's just the meta campaign, and I just never really thought about it in the opposite direction. So this is gonna be a really interesting experience for me and for you guys as well. Now, I haven't actually finished the uh, campaign yet. Um, I'm kind of going through remaking the maps and designing the uh, um, the things that we're supposed to fight, um, adding more ships and whatnot to make it more difficult. And yeah, it's going to hopefully motivate motivate me to uh, um, to get all that stuff done. But also, a couple things I want to say before we actually get into this video. Um, one. I got a new job, which is actually full-time, and that's kind of why there hasn't been a whole lot of videos up on the channel, because I've been trying to get used to having a 40-hour job instead of a 20-hour job. Uh, turns out those extra 20 hours really put a toll on you mentally and physically, so I just haven't been able to come home and have the time or the energy um, to make a video for you guys. So because of that, the amount of videos on the channel is going to be decreasing. Um, but what I'm planning on doing is having two of the Homeworld Hardcore campaign episodes out per week. Um, I'm going to do a Homeworld Hard or Homeworld uh, um, Homeworld Wars video at the end of every week, and I'm, if I still feel energetic, I might try to see if I can get a Dyson Sphere program out for you guys uh, once a week. So that's that's going to be the game plan for the channel. Hopefully, get a little bit more traction going on, get a little bit more Homeworld focus because that's kind of what the channel is supposed to be like. I'm also still working on the Bentuzi testing series. It's kind of just working a little bit in the background because that's that's a big project that I'm trying to get done. So that's not going to come out anytime soon. But I am slowly working on it. So hopefully I can get it done sometime by the end of next month. Hopefully. Anyways, that's enough chit-chatting. Uh, let's get into this. Let's start our campaign of the of the uh, um of, on the tight end side. So. These are going to be my colors. They're an inverse of uh, what Titan usually is because I'm a very backwards person. So this this I actually thought was the real colors, but it turns out base is supposed to be yellow and stripes supposed to be red, but eh, whatever. It works. Anyways, let's get into this. Oh, I love this campaign so much. hundred years ago. A satellite detected an object under the sands of the Great Desert. An expedition was sent. Yee! And they find a giant ship buried in the sand. An ancient starship buried in the sand. Deep inside the ruin was a single stone that would change the course of our history forever. On the stone was etched a galactic map and a single word more ancient than the clans themselves. Higara. Our home. I still find it hilarious, or not hilarious, I find it amazing that Higara translates to home for every single clan in Kif that is on um, Karak. That was always a really cool touch I, I admired about this game. The clans were united, and a massive colony ship was designed. Construction would take 60 years. And it would demand so many new technologies to be invented while this project was underway. 
it would demand new technologies, new industries, and new sacrifices. Billy to push giant rocks to the construction site. Site. Not shite. The greatest That's something else. was made by the scientist Karen Sajet, who had herself permanently integrated into the colony ship as its living core. Yes, queen! She is now fleet command. Karen, our queen. Our one and only queen. The promise of the Guide Stone united the entire population. Every mind became focused on the true origin of our people. Every effort on the construction of the ship that would seek it out among the stars. I really hope something like that happens in real life, where we have some sort of massive event that unites the entire Earth population to try to figure out how to get this thing working. But hey, there's the tight end mothership inside the scaffold that feels weird. Not sure how I like that, but it looks cool. I have mixed feelings about this scene. But hee hee! I'm getting ready to launch. This is Fleet Command. Reporting Mothership pre-launch status. Activating Fusion Engine 1. Command online. Resourcing online. Construction online. Cryogenic subsections A through J online. K through S online. Indeed. Fusion Engine 2. Coming online. Scaffold control, stand by for alignment. I love how the fusion engines just sound like jet engines getting ready to take off. Alignment confirmed. Stand by, release control. Prepare for launch. There she goes. She is away. The mothership has cleared the scaffold. We are away. Indeed. The one and only time the mothership will move in the campaign. Sad face. Stand by for command line testing. Alrighty. There's our tight end harvester. Our small little scout fleet that we start out start out with. Indeed. Fleet intelligence going online. Our task is to analyze all sensor data and generate mission objectives. Before the hyperdrive test, several trials must be completed. Test construction by building the primary research ship. Test resource processing by harvesting the asteroids provided nearby. Will do. Hyperspace module charging. 35% capacity and rising. The mothership will be ready for the hyperdrive test in 10 minutes. Okay. So, well, never mind. Apparently there's more going on. Stand by to begin combat trials. First, we will be monitoring formation performance. Target drones have been provided here. Assign a formation to your fighters and destroy the drones. Will do. Okay, so a couple things I gotta say before we start. One, if you guys notice, uh, you start off with 2,000 RUs in my campaign instead of 750. So a little bit of a, uh, a generous donation from me um, to get you guys settled in. Two, the reason why you start off with more RUs because everything is a lot more expensive in my mind. Scouts, 70 RUs compared to 35. Salvage Corvettes, 400. I don't remember what they were traditionally. I think there was like 135 or something. Resource Collectors, 1,000. Used to be 650. Probes, 25 instead of 30. 
Reason why probes are cheaper, because one, they're just an engine strapped to a chassis. There is literally nothing that goes into that ship. <laughs> so they're extremely cheap to make. Research ship, 1400 compared to 700 So things are a lot more expensive in my mod, and, and to make up for that, um, you get a lot more RUs as well. Because another thing, I don't know if you guys noticed when I was in uh, sensor mode, um, there are no asteroids around our mothership. Instead, we have dust clouds that are scattered throughout the uh, the belt around um, that goes around Karak. Which I thought would be a little bit cooler of a touch um, for the map, instead of just having a bunch of asteroids right next to the mothership. So, let's go ahead and start harvesting. Now, um, I believe, if I remember, um, I did put a lot more RUs on the map than you start out with in, um, in uh, Classic, so we can actually go ahead and start building us another resource collector. Production underway. And then as we get some resources docked in, we'll do the other things that we need to build in order to keep our commander happy. Anyways, let's go kill some, um, let's go kill some target drones. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, um, things that I've also adjusted. Um, another thing I've adjusted is the um, uh, how far away things have to be to no longer be rendered on the screen. By default, that was 16 kilometers. I've increased it to 30. So you can see things much further away than normal. Like for instance, we're fighting the target drones and you can still see the mothership. Normally that would be uh, um, hidden by now. Go boys, go! Also, fuel has been adjusted. It's a lot different. Um, ships like scouts, which are meant for, well, scouting, they'll burn fuel a lot faster in combat than they will flying around. So they can actually be used like scouts. Um, interceptors are the opposite. They're combat ships, so they burn more fuel traveling somewhere, but less when in combat. So that's just to encourage people to use interceptors more when they actually need, like, combat fighters. Hee <laughs> hee, here come these ones in. You're not actually supposed to see that, but you see it in my mod. I should probably move those further away. Trial complete. Flight analysis shows a 22% increase in combat performance. Hooray! The next trial will test the effectiveness of tactics. Stand by to begin tactics trial. Use aggressive or evasive tactics and engage the target drones here. Alrighty, will do. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our Mother harvester, ship. tell him to do his job. And we'll put our scouts in aggressive and tell them to attack. Another thing you have to keep in mind with my mod is one, or actually there's two more things you have to keep in mind with my mod. One, all the ships have had their health buffed up. For instance, scouts have like 450 health before that. I, I, I don't remember what they used to have in vanilla, like 110 or something. I don't remember. It was very low. Um, harvesters have 45,000 health, which is a lot higher than what they used to be. That's actually a little bit higher than a destroyer in vanilla. Um, the reason why I did this is, well, one, um, ships no longer repair themselves. Uh, they, uh, the auto repair system um, on frigates and above has been disabled, so the only way you can repair your ships is either by docking them in, like if it's a fighter and corvette, or by using support and uh, repair corvettes. So it gives support and repair corvettes more of a purpose in the game. Also fueling takes a lot longer. Fighters that, are, um, that have no fuel will take up to three minutes to get their fuel fully uh, recharged. Um, where like corvettes I think take eight or nine minutes. So yeah, um, if you have a large squadron of fighters or corvettes you have to make sure you have some sort of way to supply them with fuel. Otherwise they'll be useless once they run out of fuel. But cool, but at least we got done with those target drones. Tactics trial complete. The next trial will test the performance of the salvage corvette. Build one and capture the target drone here. Will do. So let's go ahead and dock these ships. And another thing I kind of want to talk about on the very first mission, harvesting takes a lot longer in my mod. In vanilla, harvesters would harvest um, five RUs every quarter of a second. In my mod, they harvest three RUs every half a second. 
so it's over they harvest over two times slower than what they normally do the reason why I did this is because it allows you to um, actually actually have some incentive to have more than two harvesters because normally when I play homeworld I only have two or three harvesters I don't actually build a whole lot because you harvest so quickly and you get done with the region so fast you don't need more than that with my mod six to eight harvesters is a decent amount and it's also really cool to see like six harvesters just going around these um, asteroids and dust clouds it actually looks like they are a mining operation I'm trying to devour the area for resources so yeah Gotta keep that in mind, harvesting takes a lot longer in my mod. Okay. Um, and yeah, you never actually got the stuff done yet, so. Um, let's go ahead and queue these up. Construction commencing. And um, another thing about my mod is I implemented Splendor mod, which I think I talked about that a little bit in the beginning. I probably didn't, I don't quite remember. So that means you can speed the game up. Like you can in Cataclysm. Salvage Corvette complete. So we resources exhausted. Construction paused. <laughs> so you, that's another reason why I did didn't mind slowing down the harvesting operations because you can just do this and make things go faster. Did I ever never told you to harvest? What's wrong with me? Okay. Um, we need to gather some more money, so I will be back once... Uh, actually, this guy is almost done, so I don't really have to leave. There we go. But yeah, I, I kind of like having just a, the small little scattering of dust clouds all throughout this little belt area. It looks a lot better <laughs> than just having just a bunch of asteroids next to the mothership for no reason. Like, I get why they would be there, because, you know, we invented the technology to um, use the uh, salvage corvettes to move asteroids closer to the mothership so that they can use it for the build site. Um, but I don't know. I just like the idea of just little bits of dust clouds that you get to harvest on the first map. It's really nice. Burp, 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 burp. Coming in the dock at supersonic speed. Get that. Oh, we actually don't have enough RUs to get the uh, research ship done. Oh, indeed. <laughs> Anyways, I'll be back once the research ship is completed. Oh, I guess while we're waiting, another thing I can explain is the build stuff. So not only are things more expensive, but they also take a lot longer to build. And I built a formula for each type of ship class for how long it takes them to get built. So for instance, um, non-combat ships will take 9% of their total um, amounts of uh, RUs um, for the amount of time it takes for them to build in seconds. Um, I believe frigates are 8%, corvettes are 7%, and fighters are 6%, something like that. I think that's how I did that. Um, and super capital ships are 10%. So those ones are easy to do, take care of. But I, I did that tier size, so it feels like um, like the amount of time it takes for a fighter to get built um, would equal the amount of like you would need in order to build beat a Corvette. So you would get like three or four fighters built before you get a Corvette built, and then you'll get about maybe two or three, um, maybe four Corvettes built before a frigate gets built, and then you'll get like maybe three frigates built before a super capital gets built. Something like that. <laughs> But yeah, that's something else I messed around with. You don't have to worry too much about that in single player mode since you can speed up the game. But in multiplayer mode, um, I did that so that if you're gonna build a super capital ship, not only is it gonna be extremely expensive because I also adjusted the amount of RUs they require so they are actually in the Rome class, um, but they're also a time investment. So if you wanna build a destroyer over two or three ions, you're gonna have to defend the mothership until that thing gets built because it's gonna take some time. <laughs> so yeah, that just that helps people, or helps you make the decision if you wanna stick with small ships or just uh, take the risk and build a large ship and um, face the consequences if it takes too long for it to actually get completed. 
But anyways, um, yeah, we're going to continue harvesting and I'll get my research ship built and we'll get some research going and we'll get ready to get through this mission. Research ship complete. The primary research ship has been constructed. The research division is online. Begin fighter chassis research immediately. All right. Let's go ahead and get that going. Fighter chassis research. So that we can get, um, um, yeah, interceptors. Now, in single player mode, I never build more than one research ship. Because one, you can use those resources to increase your military. And two, um, there's... You have all the time in the world until you get done with the next part of objective. So there's no reason to build multiple research ships um, in order to get the uh, research done faster. So just speed up the game for a little bit longer if, you, if it's taking too long. <laughs> oh, and there's another mode that comes with the Splendor mod, and I don't remember how to access it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. <gasps> there it is. Hee <laughs> pilot mode. Mothership. And you can use that with... Oh, hang on. I don't have the mothership focused. But yeah, there we are. There's the bridge of the mothership. And we can do the same thing with the fighters. Yee -hee. So we can be the pilot of our fighters. So just like in Homo Cataclysm, you can be the pilot of your ship. And it's shift Q in order to uh, go into pilot mode. So hee hee hee. Now we can be a harvester and use our PDA to spin in circles as we devour a dust cloud. We heavy fighter chassis research complete. Interceptor available for construction. All right, an interceptor. Um, those cost 120 RUs in my mod compared to 55. I made them a lot more expensive because I always thought interceptors were a little bit OP in vanilla. Whenever it came to all the fighters, I would only build interceptors or defenders because scouts never lasted long enough and um, defenders were perfect for anti-scout and interceptors had the armor and firepower to survive anything out there. So, but in my mod, I tried to balance out all the fighters so they all have a purpose and they all have a, a, um, a reason to be built. Like, for instance, I adjusted the fuel system in the scout, so scouts use very little fuel for flying around, so they're great for, well, scouting. And interceptors are the opposite. They burn a lot of fuel flying around, but burn very little fuel in combat, so they are your, well, combat dogs. And as you can see down here, I've reduced their firepower from vanilla from 21 to 20, because, again... Um, I always thought they're a little bit OP. And they have 800 armor compared to 450 on the scout. So, yeah, a lot more armor. They, um, there's something else I also, the scouts I've also buffed up. Um, they used to do 9 DPS, now they do 12. Because again, scouts are always a little bit underpowered in my, in my opinion. Compared to the interceptor. So, I did a little bit of balancing there. But anyways, um, we have a research ship complete. We've done our research. Corvette drive research. Now let's go ahead and finish up the salvage operation. Let's go, Mr. Salvage Corvette. How much armor does a salvage Corvette have? 5,000. And salvage Corvettes have a low amount of armor because, well, one, it's a salvage Corvette. It's going to be abused. <laughs> so it has a low amount of armor for a Corvette class ship. Um, it's also very slow. Um, 300 meters per second, which is very slow for a Corvette class. But, um, yeah. That was just kind of a little bit of balancing I did to try to not make sure that they are not so OP, um, which they are in vanilla. Oh, uh, you could barely see it. <laughs> Indeed. We got Zutaga drone. And let's go dock it in with the mothership. Complete. Repair Corvette available for construction. Okay, repair Corvettes cost 365 RUs. I think they're actually one of the cheaper um, Corvette class ships. They have a small gun that does 5 DPS just to defend itself. Not much, but it's something. Um, and they have 6,000 armor. 
Indeed. And I believe I've also made it to where Tidan focuses a little bit more on aggression. So they have a little bit more firepower and a little bit less armor than the Kushan counterparts. And support frigates and repair corvettes do a little bit less healing than the um, uh, than the Kushan counterparts. I believe the support frigate on Kushan does 150 DPS for healing. Stand by for a hyperdrive test. Internal pressure doors sealed. Abort system standing by. Yeah, I got one RU from retiring that thing. Hyperspace module fully charged. I'm ready to initiate quantum wave generation on your mark. Good luck, everyone. All sections have reported in. We are clear to proceed. Trigger the hyperspace drive at your discretion. We will once we harvest the map because there are a lot of resources here and we don't want to leave it without it. But yeah, but what I was, what I was saying is repair corvettes, um, I believe I've set them up to where they do a little bit less than three times the repairability of a um, support frigate. And part of that is because the support frigate takes 1100 RUs to construct, where a repair corvette takes 365, so I wanted to kind of balance them out based off of their RU value. Um, and I believe, if I remember from the Kushan, it's 150 um, for the support frigate, and I think it's like 40, 45 ish for the uh, for the repair corvette. Where on Titan, you have 125 for the support frigate, and I believe it is something like maybe 35 for the repair corvette. 35 DPS uh, healed per second. Which 35 sounds like a lot, or, do or doesn't really sound like a lot, but it is. That's, um, I think that's as much as a heavy corvette does. I don't quite remember though. We'll figure that out when we get to the next mission. So again, tried to balance it out to make it a little bit more um, um, realistic compared to the values of the game. Anyways, um, we are all we have left to do now is harvest the map. We have a lot of dust clouds to harvest and they are all over the place. So this might actually take a little bit. So I will be back once we get done harvesting. Oh, and I guess while I'm waiting, I did totally forget to say that the resource collector has had its speed upgraded to 400 meters per second. So they do move faster than they would in vanilla. And I don't think I changed any other speeds, like scouts and interceptor are still the same. Um, I repair, believe repair corvette is still the same. Salvage corvette I reduced, again, just so it doesn't get too abused. Um, but yeah, I definitely made resource collectors faster. And part of that is because, well, one, it has four engines, and two, it's just a giant cargo ship. <laughs> It has a giant cargo ship with the ability to break down particles to turn them in RUs. So it's like, yeah, it needs more speed. <laughs> so I, might, I thought I might as well throw that in there. I think we're getting close to finishing up harvesting the area. This area is pretty much done. Um, they still have a little bit more um, dust clouds to harvest over here. Uh, but yeah, without the um, the speed up the, with that uh, Splendor mod comes with, this would have been an hour and 20 minutes at this point. So yeah. Thank goodness we have the ability to speed up the game. Alright, so we just finished harvesting the entire map. There was one dust cloud all the way over here in the corner that we couldn't quite get because I didn't make the map large enough to actually be able to access it from our harvesters. Oops. <laughs> That's why we test things. Uh, but we ended up getting 6,500 RUs out of that entire dust cloud area. Now this sounds like a lot of RUs, but um, keep in mind that everything, most of the things you build in my mod are about twice as expensive as they used to be. So to figure out how much this would be in vanilla, just take this value and divide it by two. So about 3,200 RUs is how much we have, which is for vanilla that's equivalent to like two destroyers, which again is a lot of money. In mine, it's it's not two destroyers. Out uh, of destroyers, about 4,700 are used in my mod, so this would be enough for one super capital. It's not even enough for a heavy cruiser. A, seven, a heavy cruiser costs 7,250 in my mod. So again, 6,500 sounds like a lot, but in my mod, it's about a decent amount. Like, I would say we're not rich, but we're not poor either. We're just middle class. <laughs> Anyways. Let's go ahead and get the heck out of here. Also, this took two hours and 15 minutes to harvest for two harvesters. 
because of how far they have to travel inside the dust field. So again, thank goodness that we have uh, fast forwarding because this only took 20 minutes um, for me um, with the uh, um, the fast forward ability. But anyways, um, let's get the heck out of here. Auto docking. Let's get. Let's go and leave Karak and test the mothership's hyperdrive. Hyperspace initiated. Also, yellow hyperspace signature for Titan. I love it. He. All hyperspace systems operating at full power. Hooray! If the hyperspace targeting system is accurate, we will emerge in close proximity to the support vessel Car Salim. This ship has spent the past 10 years traveling on conventional drives to reach the outer Karak system. The Car Salim will monitor the quantum waveform as we return to normal space and assist in tuning our drive control systems. If the hyperspace module malfunctions, the Car Salim will provide assistance and resupply. Mission objectives will be to dock with the support vessel in order to complete adjustments to the mothership and her drives. Will do. Let's dock with the car slam. Oh yeah, and we get the the weird Titan angles. So strange compared to the Kushan ones. All ships auto launching. Anyways, that's gonna be the end of this first episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the redesigning of mission one. Um, most of it was just relocating the, um, uh, getting rid of the asteroids and turning them into dust clouds and relocating them into the uh, the uh, um, the belt that goes around Karak. I think that was the only like major design change I did on that mission. Because everything else I really like, you know, um, the. I probably could push the the tight the um, target drones further back so we can test the fuel systems on the ships as well as their weapon systems, you know, for RP purposes. <laughs> that might be one minor adjustment I do because that's a very easy adjustment. But other than that, let me know how you guys think this series is going. Um, we just started, uh, but I every map up to mission eight has been actually mission eight has also been redesigned i'm not like super redesigned but like the resources have been redistributed to what i wanted them to be uh but yeah every map up to mission eight has been redesigned so i'm really really excited to show that off to you guys and again um once i get the campaign completely done and get it doing get it like the way i wanted to do and test it and you know, bug tested and everything. Um, I will be releasing this to the public on ModDB. I'm also planning to make difficulty, different difficulty versions of the campaign as well, which will basically just be different versions of the game because there is no difficulty setting. Basically, we'll have normal, which is what this one's going to be designed off of. That's what the true experience of the Home Run Hardcore campaign is going to be about. Um, have an easier difficulty, which will have um, some of the more advanced units taken out to make the campaign a little bit easier for those who want a hardcore experience but aren't skilled enough to handle this version of the hardcore. And then there's going to be a hard version, which will have even more ships in um, that we have to fight. And there'll also be some secrets on the map that you can find to help you get through the more difficult versions. And there's also going to be a special salvage only version, which I'm, which will be the normal version, but with the RU set to 10% of the value um, for the asteroids and dust clouds, which means that the, if you're gonna build your economy, um, you have to do it by salvaging the enemy. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to eventually get done with those mods so I can work on other ones. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and end this here. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you do, please leave a like. If you like what I do, consider subscribing and I'll check you guys out in the next video. Until then. This is Captain Sovan signing out. The Baker have arrived. Emergency hyperspace procedures initiated. The mothership must survive.